Well, it's Buffalo Bills offseason. Mike, I'm at a bit of a loss as to where I should be focusing my attention right now. Well, I think for now, it's on the coaching staff. And I think Sean McDermott looked at the way the season ended, and there's reasons to be optimistic, but they were still 6-10. and 10. And they had some issues, and he's addressed some of that. Everybody knew special teams was a disaster. And then you make the moves on the offensive line and at wide receiver. Maybe a little bit of a surprise there just because some of the guys had progressed a little bit. But I think they're going to really be focused on that in the offseason. And I guess now we're going to find out who they're pinpointing for those positions. But everything still is going to focus on Josh Allen, right? Who's helping him the most? I think Brian Dable is going to have a little more say maybe in some of the guys who come in in the coaching staff. But I think this is where – teams evolve a little bit where McDermott with Dable, maybe Leslie Frazier realize kind of what they need around them before they get into free agency and the draft and all the things they're going to need. You've been critical of the staff that they go into the, this is the start of their third year in. Uh, how much is the stake for them, do you think? It's huge because, I mean, I think McDermott made a mistake up front saying we have a three-year plan. Him and Bean said vocally multiple times we have a three-year plan. This is it. It's pot or not. <laughs> and if you don't do it, now I have the ability to take your audio. Folks have the ability to take your thing. Well, you told me there was a three-year plan here. You told me something was going to happen. There's no more excuses to be had. There's no more processes to be said. There's no more respecting the football to do. It has to get done this year. There has to be significant progress. If not, you look like a giant liar. Well, you know, but, but, okay, they've been sloppy in how they've gotten there, and they've made multiple mistakes. But if you look at it from up top, they got through the year sure. with terrible cap issues. They drafted their quarterback of the future. But to your point, now they've set themselves up yeah. for this year. So it does look like ah, a plan. Ah, ah. They've set themselves up to potentially be successful. You gotta spend the money the right yeah. way, you gotta draft the right way. So if you don't do that and you have set yourself up to do this, see ya. What are you looking at? I think this, the league's becoming a scoring league. If you can't put up 25 to 30 points a game, you're not gonna win in the NFL anymore. So I think they need some really great skilled people. I was really encouraged by Josh Allen at the end of the season. Um, I'm, I've never been a Bills fan, being a Patriots inbred, um, but uh, I really want to get on the bandwagon for Rochester people. I really, really do. And I know I overthought last year and thinking Bills were going to win 10 games, but I'm very encouraged by the I way Helen played. overthought Blake. is the word I'd use. Yeah, I, I, did, I did. I tried to get in the weeds and think all the reasons why they were going to be good. But hey, how about Kyle Williams? Great hands, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. They should have used him more in the offense. You know, right? Catch it ain't quite bold in Bill's history. <laughs> you know. I look at the Indianapolis Colts yeah. as a team that got it together really quick, focusing on what they felt they needed. And even with a first-year coach, they flipped the script in one year. Is that, a, is that something the Bills can look at and says, maybe there's something there for us? Yes, except you have a veteran quarterback. Yeah. You have a guy who has played at a MVP level. Where the Bills, I would say you, you have to look at them more, and we've said this before, more like the Bears – model of a team that went out and got the quarterback, had a defense to build around, try to get the weapons, and then you, it doesn't mean it's all going to work. And when you look at the Bears, it worked to a point, and they still have a ways to go, and then you have to hope that Trubisky progresses. But to your point about the Colts, it is funny when you look at a team that has a quarterback that people thought might be done, have a head coach who didn't get any of those interviews and eventually got hired, and a guy in Ballard who's the general manager that most people did not see as a prime candidate, and all three of those guys had a great year. And a bad offensive line. Well, that has turned into, right, into a great one. But if you're talking about the Colts versus Bills, there's one huge thing that everyone's leaving out here. The division the Colts play yeah. in versus the division the Bills play in. That AFC th South is a tire fire. Okay, it is now. The difference between the two divisions is obviously the NFC, AFC East has been in the most top-heavy division in the history of the NFL with the Patriots, whereas that division, the teams were certainly bunched together. Jacksonville is a playoff team. Houston's been a playoff team. So you have teams that are better. Mm -hmm. In total, that division was better than the AFC. Oh, okay. It's, it's a, a dumpster fire now. 